So here I am with another base station. What I have here is a Nokia Siemens Networks Flexi VCDMA base station. What I have learned from looking up what this unit is, is this is called the base station or the system station, system base or at least the system module. What it consists of is that there is the lower part which is the system station then to the left we have a optional module and to the right there is space for another module. Looking at the label of uh, this uh, module, it looks like it might just be a kind of a fuse box that it can take some 48 volts in at 115 amps and then can split it out to the other modules. What I learned from watching a commercial video is that this uh, plastic housing underneath it there could be a trans uh, transmitting module. Else what we have down here is network connectors, 1000 1 gigabit network, there's some uh, sync out sync in and over here we have some fiber uptick references input output else there's not much to say about it not so many screws in this unit having unplugged the heavy uh, rubber gasket plugs which is all in there because this is actually meant for outside mountain this is not supposed to sit inside some air-conditioned room this is actually sitting on a side wall or something near the antenna itself but I succeeded in removing the lid and it was actually a little hard to remove as you can see there are some screws on a bar here and those were actually the heat sink for these TO247 transistors yeah it's IRF1807 transistors and this seems to be what I expected, just a fuse box and some measurements and other kind of control. But what is a nice item down here, which I could probably use for something else. I'm not sure if you can see the writing on it here. A 0 0.002 ohm resistor used for measuring load current. And there's uh, seven of them. That's pretty, ni pretty neat. Oh, there's another here. So, actually, eight of those resistors. Now, having everything removed, what we can see is that uh, it has two extension ports for these modules. And it is simply a small print connector between the two. It's of course made with two different distance and distances, so you cannot mount the transmitter module at the side of the fuse module. If we take a look under the rubber gasket, it's just another input slot. And just before we start, I am completely aware that my warranty is void. So let's take a look inside what is beneath this digital signal processing card. Apparently what we have here are the back sides of the cards. There's some interconnector between the boards. Maybe you can install different kind of options here. Let's see if we can lift the first board up. This is sitting at the back, so maybe that's some main CPU. And that actually looks as an exact copy of what we have from the top. And as you can see, they are practically identical. So uh, I don't want to waste more time looking at that. See if we can get the connectors to come out. 
Okay, so starting with the DSP boards, we here see the Planar PCB Transformer Switch Mode Power Supply that sits up in the left corner of the board. Uh, what is special about Planar uh, Switch Mode Power Supply Transformers are that the cores go through the PCB itself and it is layers within the PCB that are the windings of the transformer. The heart of the DSP board is a Freescale SC8548 CV Tank B. It's a PowerQuick 3 CPU. Uh, I have not been able to find the correct data sheets for this model, but it's somewhere between 800 to 1333 MHz, 512 kilobyte, kilobytes of level 2 cache, and as you can see the Samsung memory uh, above it, I have not been able to decipher the part number of it, but the CPU supports from 2 to 16 gigabytes of DDR2 memory. The seven DSP ICs on each board, is power. its power is controlled by a Lattice Power 122088 in-system programmable power supply controller or monitor. Uh, to connect all these uh, DSP chips there is a Marvel A8E 6185 IC, which is a 10 port gigabit switch. Each of the DSP chips from Texas Instruments is a TMS 320 series, which is a 3.6 gigahertz CPU, but meant solely for the digital signal processing. It has a power capability of up to 28,800 million instructions per second. In a complete overview of the board, what we see up at the top, the gold mesh, is a 48 volt, 50 watt resistor, which I presume is used for heating up the computer to avoid it freezing as it is mounted outside. There are two of these digital signal processing boards in the computer, which totals to 14 TMS320 DSP chips, so it has a total calculating power of just abo above 400,000 MIPS. It's about the same as 3 Intel Core i 4770M processes. And that's the same CPU I have in my desktop work PC. The communication board uh, is controlled by a Altera Cyclone 2 FPGA. It's part of the EP2 C5 family. It has room for just over 4,500 LEs. It has 120,000 RAM bits and 150, 158 user I.O. pins. Underneath it we have a Epson Toyocom temperature controlled crystal oven which resonates at, at 30.72 MHz. The gigabit network interface is uh, first filtered by the Pulse MX500 Thor NL isolation transformers for internet, for Ethernet. And the chip you see down at the bottom is a Marvel Alaska 88E1145. It's a gigabit quad port Ethernet transceiver. The communications board also has a Freescale SC8548 PowerQuick 3 CPU sitting near the optical inputs and outputs. It also has 2 to 16 gigabytes of DDR2 memory. Um, what we see is uh, there is an, a NEC 4872389 MUXU2. It's an unknown CPU, I have not been able to localize any data on it. There sits a 153.6 100, MHz crystal, and along is a Marvel 88E6185 10-port giga switch, gigabit switch to handle the five optical input ports.